Sometimes dystonia affects the muscles of the larynx and so affects speaking. And that's uh, usually called laryngeal dystonia or sometimes called spasmodic dysphonia. In that condition, because the abnormal muscle activity is affecting the larynx, the voice is changed and it's often changed in a particular way. There are two main types of laryngeal dystonia. One, which is called adductor dystonia, is where the vocal cords spasm together. And if you think about that, it means that it's difficult for uh, air to get through and it would tend to come through in a very strangled way. And so the voice in people with adductor laryngeal dystonia is often very strangled, it's hoarse. People might have what are called pitch breaks where the pitch of the voice changes very suddenly from one thing to another. There's a rarer type of laryngeal dystonia where the vocal cords are spasm apart. That's called abductor laryngeal dystonia. And there, the voice is very breathy because the vocal cords are apart all of the time. So people have a very breathy voice. Sometimes laryngeal dystonia occurs just on its own and it uh, would tend to present in people's 50s and 60s around a similar age to where cervical dystonia, so neck dystonia, presents. And typically uh, it's an isolated dystonia, so it's not part of a wider degenerative or structural disease of the brain. And in that way it's very similar to cervical dystonia and to blepharospasm. Sometimes uh, laryngeal dystonia occurs together with cervical dystonia and often uh, dystonic movements around the mouth or oral mandibular dystonia. And in a pattern which is sometimes called Neige syndrome, you might get a combination of cervical dystonia, oral mandibular dystonia and some laryngeal involvement as well. In terms of diagnosis, it's something which needs to be suspected so sometimes people can think that they might have a, um, a, a hoarse voice for another reason, maybe a, a mechanical problem in the throat. And it's often an ear, nose and throat doctor who would make the diagnosis because they can look down uh, at the vocal cords and see how they are spasming either together or apart. Uh, it's something which is a treatable condition, but treatment can be a little bit tricky. The mainstay of treatment is with botulinum toxin injections, but those injections need to be given into the laryngeal muscles and that's something which needs a lot of expertise and there are only a smaller number of people who can do laryngeal botulinum toxin injections compared to people, the number of people who can do injections for, for example, neck dystonia. The other issue is that botulinum toxin injections for laryngeal dystonia tend to have a higher rate of side effects compared to, say, injections for neck dystonia. And that's because it's possible to affect the swallowing muscles and therefore to cause swallowing difficulties and also to uh, weaken the laryngeal muscles too much so it becomes difficult to speak. Those side effects, like any side effects of botulinum toxin, will wear off uh, as the toxin itself wears off. But obviously it can be difficult while those side effects are going on. Occasionally, uh, medical treatment that's used for uh, dystonia in general. Sometimes medication that's used generally for people with dystonia can be helpful for people with laryngeal dystonia, but it tends to be botulinum toxin which is the mainstay of treatment. Laryngeal dystonia as a condition occurring alone is a very rare form of dystonia. Uh, in combination with cervical dystonia it's slightly more common, but still is a very rare presentation of dystonia. For some people with laryngeal dystonia, speech and language therapy can be useful. That can be in trying to learn strategies about how to overcome uh, the problem with voice and to generate better, uh, more understandable speech. And also for people who've got severe problems, even the provision of communication aids, which is something that speech and language therapists are expert in. So it is usually worthwhile for people who have laryngeal dystonia to see a speech and language therapist. Ideally, of course, somebody who has knowledge about laryngeal dystonia. Mm -hmm.